Hey everyone, this is Zeb. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest misconceptions that students have, or one of the major issues that students have when thinking about the supply and the demand model and the terminology that we use. So we're going to talk about a difference between the change in demand versus a change in quantity demanded uh, and, and what that actually means. So let's just start with a demand curve. So remember, a demand curve is... Uh, so we've got quantity on the horizontal axis, price on the vertical. And a demand curve just shows how much buyers want to buy at every possible price. Right? You pick a price, come over to the demand curve, and you can tell how much buyers want to buy. That's my quantity demanded. And of course, if the price changes, the amount that I want to buy is going to change too. So we get quantity demanded two if that's quantity demanded one. So as the price changes, the amount that buyers want to buy is going to change. And that's really all a demand curve does is it shows me how much buyers want to buy at every possible price. Now, there are other things that will affect how much buyers want to buy. And those are the things that we call the determinants of demand. So let's think about this. How much buyers want to buy? That's the quantity demanded. And that's going to depend on lots of things. So it's going to be a function, if we think about this mathematically, it's a function of price, right? Clearly, the amount uh, that buyers want to buy is dependent on, upon the price. And it's going to be dependent on those other factors too, the determinants of demand. So determinants of demand are tastes and preferences of buyers. So that's one thing that's going to uh, affect how much buyers want to buy. Their income is going to affect how much they want to buy. The number of buyers in the market is going to affect how much will be bought in that market at every possible price. Uh, additionally, we have the um, future expectations. So future expectations regarding price, buyers care not only about what the price is today, but what they think the price will be in the future. And so that may affect how much they want to buy today. And of course, uh, it also is going to depend on the price of related goods. So related goods are substitutes and complements. So each of these things is something that will affect how much buyers want to buy. But graphically, they do not all affect it the same way. So as we have just seen already, a change in price as I move from P1 to P2, you can see we move along the demand curve from point A to point B. Right? And if I move from P2 to P1, then I'm going to move from point B to point A. So my quantity demanded is changing. Right? The quantity demanded is Q1 corresponds with price P1 at point A, and the quantity demanded Q2 corresponds with price P2 at point B. So as we change price, this is going to result in movement along a curve. So the change in price results in movement along an existing demand curve. Right? We don't actually move the curve. And so we just call this a change in quantity demanded. Right? Now this is holding everything else constant. And the reason why a change in price doesn't cause a change in demand is because, or a, ch a shift of the demand curve, is because price is already plotted on the vertical axis. Right. Price is already being taken into account. So if it changes, it's not going to shift the curve. It's just going to move from one point to another on that existing demand curve. Now, there are some other things here. We said tastes and preferences are important. We said income is important. The number of buyers is important. Future expectations and the price of related goods, right? complements and substitutes. These also will affect how much buyers want to buy of a given good or service. But you can see that because we're in two-dimensional space, we've got price on the, on the vertical axis and quantity on the horizontal axis. These other factors, which also affect the quantity, 
are not price, so they're going to cause the curve not to move along the curve from one point to another, but to shift the entire demand curve. So the entire curve is going to shift. So we could get an increase in demand. So we've got quantity and price. Here's our demand curve. I'll go ahead and put a supply curve in there too. All right, here's our equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity. So we could get an increase in demand, which we would show with a rightward shift of the demand curve, or we could get a decrease in demand, which we would show with a leftward shift of the demand curve. So these other factors, right, taste and preferences, income, change in the number of buyers, future expectations, and the price of related goods and services, these are all going to cause shifts in the demand curve. Shifts of entire demand curve. So a change in price only results in movement along the demand curve Whereas the change in these other factors, the determinants of demand, shift the entire demand curve. So we call those an increase or decrease in demand, right? This rightward shift of the demand curve. This is an increase in demand. This is a decrease in demand. This movement from A moving to point B is an increase in quantity demanded as a result of a change in price, and movement from B to A would be a decrease in quantity demanded as a result of an increase in the price. So that's really the difference between the two. So now we are going to shift gears and we are going to talk about the difference between a change in supply and change in quantity supplied. So if you understood what we did in the demand side, then this is a piece of cake, All right? So let's think about what the supply curve is. The supply curve is just a picture that illustrates the law of supply. It essentially tells me at every possible price, how much do sellers want to sell? Well, we've got quantity on the horizontal axis, price on the vertical, and the law of supply tells us that supply curves slope upward and to the right. That is at a lower price, we'll call it P1, sellers want to sell the quantity supplied is QS1. And at a higher price, P2, sellers are willing to sell at this higher price more units because they can earn more money by doing so. So we get this quantity supplied too. So that's all a supply curve is, is it tells me how much sellers are willing to sell at every possible price. Now, Clearly, one of the things that affects quantity supplied right, is the price. So quantity supplied is going to be a function of price, right? but it's also going to depend on other things. So how much sellers want to sell is also going to depend on things like the costs of production, the technology that they have available to produce the product, it's also going to depend on uh, just in a market in how many sellers you actually have. So the number of sellers is going to affect how many units will be bought and sold at every price. Also, here we have the future expectations. Right. So just like buyers care about future prices, so do sellers. And the expectations of sellers about the future price of their product will affect how much they want to sell today. If they think the price is going to go up, if possible, they may want to hold on to whatever it is they're selling and wait and try to sell it once the price has gone up. So future expectations are going to affect how much they want to sell today, as will the price of related goods or services. So what we mean here is that sellers essentially care not only about the price or the value of what they are currently doing, but they also care about the price and the value um, 
of other things that they could be doing. So if something else that you could be doing becomes more profitable, then maybe you want to sell less of what you are currently making and make more of the other thing. So they care about the opportunity cost. So all of these things are going to affect how much sellers want to sell. Now, because price is already graphed on the supply and demand graph, a change in price is not going to cause a shift of the supply curve because to an extent, price is already being taken into account. What happens is as price changes, we move from say this point A to this point B on the supply curve. So as price goes up, the quantity supplied is going to rise as we move from point A to point B. And as price falls, we're going to move from point B to point A along the supply curve and the quantity supplied is going to fall. So a change in price results in a change in quantity supplied or movement along the curve. So this results in movement along supply curve and not an actual shift of the curve, again, because we've already got price plotted on the vertical axis. So these other things that affect how much sellers want to sell, their costs, the technology that's available, the number of sellers, their future expectations about price, and the prices of related goods and services, these all affect how much sellers want to sell, but they are not going to cause movement along the curve because we've only got two dimensions and we've already got price and quantity. So these things are going to shift the entire curve. They're kind of going on in the background. We don't have an axis for them on our graph. So a change in these things, we call them the determinants of supply, are going to cause a shift in the curve itself. So costs are one, technology is another, sellers, number of sellers, future expectations about price, and the price of related goods and services. So these things, right, numbers one through five, are going to result in a shift of the entire supply curve. They're going to result in an entire shift of the curve. So let's just plot this out. We've got quantity on the horizontal price on the vertical axis. Here's our demand curve, supply curve. We've got an equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity. An increase in supply means that at every possible price, sellers want to sell more. So we would use a rightward shift of the supply curve to indicate that at every possible price, sellers want to sell more. So notice at the price P star, they used to want to sell Q star, now they want to sell more than Q star. A decrease in supply as a result of a change of one through five is going to result in a leftward shift of the supply curve, indicating that at every possible price they want to sell less. Notice at the price P star, they used to want to sell Q star, but now, whoops, not there, ignore that. So let's see. Apparently, I can't erase. There we go. All right. At the price P star, they want to sell this amount. Q, we'll call it squiggly. Whereas here, from an increase in supply at that old price, they want to sell more. We'll call it Q hat. So you can see that by increasing the supply, that means at every price, they want to sell more than they did before, and decreasing supply at every price, they want to sell less than they did before. Now, those, are going, those changes are going to have effects on the price. But changes in price itself will cause movement, say, from point A to point B on the existing supply curve, right? movement along the supply curve, whereas change in anything other than price, so a change in cost, technology, sellers, expectations, or related goods, that is the determinants of supply, are going to cause actual shifts of the supply curve. So I hope this video helped. If it didn't, um, then please continue to look at this. It's important. 
making it successfully through principles of economics is much, much easier if you understand this. And of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for watching.